Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Al, um, full name Al Haji, and I'm the Regional Sales Director here at Just Add Power. I um, wanted to focus today a little bit on our newest generation of product, which is our 3G, um, which allows for 4K distribution. A um, couple announcements that we just had this past CEDIA, um, and I'll touch upon those also. Um, there's my email. Um, A-L-H-A-J-I at Just Add Power. Um, I also go by Al, so if you want to email me by Al at Just Add Power, that works too. Some of the benefits of having a uh, smaller company that you can pretty much snatch up any kind of email address that you want, so I was able to grab both of those. That's my direct cell phone number right there. Any kind of questions that you might have from this webinar, um, in general, whatever it is, um, pretty much 24-7. If I'm not able to answer your phone call, just leave me a voicemail and I'll get back with you as soon as possible. I'll give you two, a couple other phone numbers. First is going to be our sales office. Uh, our sales office is actually located in Cincinnati, Ohio. Um, I'm usually in the office as well as Jeff Terzo, who's our VP of international sales as well as sales development, but also it's manned by an office manager. So any kind of questions that hey, you're not able to get a hold of Al, Jeff, or anyone else on the staff itself, um, you do have an outlet that you'll be able to leave a voicemail or even contact somebody. This is also an important phone number, and this goes to our support team. Um, and I'll talk about our headquarters or just that power in general, um, but that support team is going to be in Florida. That number will go there, 800-615-0206, and it's extension 2. Um, our support staff is actually teamed or headed by our actual engineers of our product itself. So it's always great to have um, the people on um, the forefront that are able to answer those questions and understand what the issues are. So the agenda today, and I want to make it brief, uh, but what makes it so different, um, the feature sets, and I want to focus on the feature sets around our newest generation, which is our 3G, um, our product line, um, and understanding how we actually do our routing of 4K and also controlling the system itself. So a little brief history um, of the company itself. Um, kind of, I always start off with introducing the company, even though we're over 25 years old, started in 92. Um, a lot of people are still uh, unfamiliar with us, so kind of reintroducing the brand itself. Started in 92 with a couple of IBM engineers, and uh, they saw the opportunity to break off from IBM and start off their own company. And they were doing, at that time, VGA over IP. Uh, roughly about 2009 is when Just That Power kind of went into the HDMI over IP distribution. So overall, we've been in the, this sector of distribution for about seven years. So um, I, I spoke about it before that about our 3G, and that really is our third generation. So you're going to see more of an evolution of our product rather, rather than a revolution of our product. Uh, we just add more features. We add more hardware to our product line, which allows us to do what our end users as well as our dealers and distribution outlets are wanting us to do. So what makes this so unique? Overall, when it deals with HDMI over IP, um, we're, we're fully scalable. Uh, we're reliable products. So uh, with the thinking process of being um, creating products that are going to work in the commercial industry, um, you know that our products are going to be very durable. Um, when it deals with the heat that's uh, generated by the products, we run very cool. So heat usually is a big factor in kind of killing off the products themselves. We know that our products run at a um, desirable temperature and that they will last, um, as well as it's very expandable. So we'll talk about the basics of what we do and how we're able to expand, as well as flexible. So. Um, and it will also be talked about in the basics of how we do that. Um, cost of ownership. So cost of ownership has been um, expanded within this last couple of months with our newest generation of product. Um, but 
being able to just add components here and there is what we're able to do. And it really keeps your cost down for yourself as well as the end user. Um, we've been tested. We're in the industry. Everyone knows our name when it deals with the industry and how reliable we are. And we're in different segments of commercial as well as residential. So just a little bit more. Um, like I said, over 25 years of us doing this, um, American support and design, which is very uh, important. So like I said, our support teams in Florida, um, in Largo, Florida, there are engineers. They are Cisco certified engineers. Um, and I'll talk about Cisco as well as Luxo in a bit. Um, limitless distribution. We have no distance limitations, especially when it's dealing with 4K. So being able to have distances that go for miles and still have the distribution of 4K is something that we pride ourselves upon, especially with the products that we have. Um, no handshaking issues at all, so fully HDCP 2.2 compliant, um, able to upscale and downscale whenever needed. And if data works, we work. So you don't need special cabling to actually do our distribution. Um, a simple infrastructure is all you're going to need, and I'll talk about that infrastructure coming up here. So overall, the basics. What do we do? So we make transmitters as well as receivers. Um, so for, for every one of your sources that you're going to have in your system itself, you're going to need a transmitter. And specifically, so we've seen um, with other HDMI over IP systems, they typically have a limitation on how many transmitters that you can actually have in your system. In each one of our devices themselves, with the software that's built in, you can get up to 4,000 transmitters within that system itself. Um, we haven't met anyone to go over that limit right now, but, um, and I'll talk about that a little bit briefly, that it's all software for us. So if you have a system that's more than that 4,000, we're able to build the firmware that's going to allow you to go above that 4,000. So in the same mind frame, um, for every one of your, your displays that you're going to have in your system, you need a receiver. Um, thinking in the same way as the transmitters themselves. So uh, with the software that's already built in, you can go up to 65,000 receivers. Um, likewise, if you have a system that's going to be more simple firmware upgrade that we can provide um, that'll allow you to go to throughout um, and even more that 65,000. So um, us building those transmitters and receivers, the encoders and decoders, uh, we are an uh, IP company, so you do need to do this over a network. Um, you would need some kind of network uh, switcher that's going to be in the middle. Uh, we recommend two manufacturers, which are going to be your Cisco or your Luxo, and I'll explain that a little bit more as in why we recommend those switches themselves. Overall, you would need some kind of control system that's going to manage that network. So the feature sets that are in our devices themselves. This is an example of one of the bars that we're in. There's actually a casino in uh, Kentucky. Um, it's the Belterra Casino uh, right next to the Kentucky Speedway. Um, so it just shows you that the versatility of our product themselves. Um, obviously, uh, the company made products that are very uh, adaptable to the commercial environment, but as well as the residential environment. So you're going to see that each one of our devices themselves can live in any one of those environments. So really leaving the flexibility up to you that you're not having to reinvent the wheel and trying to determine which one's going to be the right one for you because they do both. So speaking of our third generation, um, really features around being able to distribute uh, 4K uh, Ultra HD resolution support is built into every one of our receivers themselves. We're fully HTCP 2.2 compliant. Um, in each one of our receivers, we do have a scaler that can either broadcast that HDCP uh, 2.2, HDMI 2.0, even downscale to HDMI 1.4. Um, so really, we have no limitations in the content as well as the displays when it deals with our systems. So being able to have a 4K television as well as a 4K source within your system, as well as add in within your system 1080 displays, 720 displays, and not dumbing down your system to those resolutions on those displays, being able to uh, broadcast down to that 1080 display as well as 
broadcast to that 4, uh, 4K display, 2160, isn't a problem at all with our scalers in each one of our receivers. One thing we also really uh, pride ourselves is our instant switching. Speaking of our third generation, um, we can switch sources within a frame. And we're talking about uh, about 22 milliseconds. So um, really fast and being able to switch from whatever uh, source that you do have in the system itself. Some of the audio features that are all built into our boxes on our third generation products, um, being able to have uncompressed audio format support, um, your different Dolby multi-channels from Dolby Atmos, uh, any one of your 7.1 um, Dolby, we're able to do that. You have an HDMI pass-through on our boxes themselves, as well as mic ins um, and also line ins and also audio outputs in each one of our um, products themselves. Other features. So, like I said, evolution of our product. Um, we did have the option of doing power supplies as well as PoE devices. Um, what you're going to find with our newest generation is that they are all PoE. Now, we do give you the option if you do want to use power supply, depending on your infrastructure as well as your system itself. Uh, you do have that opportunity of using that different ways to control our systems, um, either through RS-232, 2A CEC, you will have the ability of distributing USB 2.0, um, some other images or some other features that are gonna be uh, able to show our image overlay, image push, uh, image pause, and as well as image pull. So instant switching, uh, talked about that already. Um, being able to switch in between sources within that 22 milliseconds, all done through the system in your network switching. Uh, another piece that's added into each one of our 3G, um, as well as our 2G plus, is going to be video wall support. Um, being able to go from a 2.2 even up to a 16 by 16 system, you're able to do that. Um, right now, the software that's built in goes up to that 16 by 16. If you're wanting to do anything more than that 16 by 16, let us know because that's easily done by firmware. And all we have to do is just build that and send it to you. Our video walls are fully dynamic. It doesn't matter how many sources you have in the system. You'll be able to display that on that video wall. If you're wanting to make it at one source or many sources or change the dynamic of the video wall, you'll have the opportunity of doing that. All built in to our products without any um, extra fees or extra software added support. Just something really fun that we saw that we could do, um, being able to do a video wall um, done by Mosaic, changing the um, images either 180 or 90 degrees as possible with our 3G product. So having a nice little display, depending on where you are, even if it's in a house, residential, in the hallway, in the bathroom, being able to show simple um, pictures or whatever it is, you'll be able to do that um, by using the mosaic. Just a very cool little feature. This is just to show you um, how dynamic the video wall is. So this uh, particular example is going to be a Great American Ballpark in Cincinnati, Ohio. Um, they are using RTI as their control system, um, as well as the multiple display. So this is their, in their handlebar restaurant, uh, which is along the first baseline. Um, being able to uh, show the dynamics and what they do, they recently put this in in time for the All-Star Game, which was last year. Um, right now, Great American Ballpark has the largest amount of our inputs and outputs throughout their ballpark not only in this restaurant, as well as other parts within the ballpark that they're able to showcase what they can do around um, their control system and then just their support.
So obviously when it deals with this, uh, you'd have to program it depending on your customer, uh, on the end user and how they're wanting to do that. Um, but just showing you the possibility of having those multiple displays within the video wall and the configuration and um, having it fully dynamic. And I think I mentioned that it was RTI. It was actually Crestron that they're using as a control system. Um, I talked about with the mosaic wall being able to rotate images. So being able to have a portrait video wall is possible with our products now. So all we do is just rotate the image 90 degrees on each one of those panels. Um, really cool display, really cool uh, way of uh, utilizing space, um, as well as having the possibility of having a video wall without having um, your evened out numbers for a two by two or four by four. You can just sing, simply go with three panels across and just rotate and stretch out those images and you have a, a portrait wall. Image pool. So image pool works in any kind of environment itself. So each one of our products themselves will allow you to actually pull the images that are going through the receivers. Um, you'd see that example done pull to any one of your, uh, your control systems from RTI control four, or even Crestron. That way your end user actually knows what's going on on the background. Um, also helps on the support side, knowing if you have an issue with your actual devices themselves or actually your source. So if you don't see any kind of image being pulled itself, you'd know that it's your source that's uh, possibly going bad. A couple examples of image pull being used with different kind of control systems. So you have RTI there to your right, as well as control four on your left. We also do have image push. Uh, so we've learned that uh, an empty screen is not very pleasing to the end user. Um, depending on what's going on in the background, if it's either the source or um, even any one of our receivers. So built in every one of our receivers, you are given the ability to put in the JPEG image in there. It can be a um, simple image. It can be uh, a logo, whatever it is that you feel fit. And you can also tell the receiver when you actually want those images to go through. So if your receiver isn't being able to grab that source, and there's something going on with that source itself, you can do it as in 10 seconds, 20 seconds, whatever makes sense for you, whatever makes sense for your end user is what you can do, but really no wasted space and no blank screens. Also the image pop works in the same way, being able to put that customized logo uh, onto the display itself. You can move it in four different corners of the display. You can actually program that, that image to move across the display and our support team can help with that also. One really cool thing about our product is that it doesn't have to be centralized. So anywhere that you can drop any kind of cabling, so, and I'll talk about the infrastructure. Uh, so with our cabling itself and being able to pass through our video distribution, you need at least a 5E um, CAT cable itself. And as long as you're able to have that CAT cable um, located in any source or any place where your display is, you're actually able to put a receiver or even a transmitter. So being able to have or decentralize having a Blu-ray player um, part of your system, but not inside of a rack is something that you can easily do, or even to a gaming machine. It doesn't matter. Um, all you have to have is a receiver or a transmitter, depending on what you're wanting to do on that location and have the right access to it and you're able to decentralize your entire system. Shared gigabit LAN. So each one of our devices have a DHCP server built into them. So pretty much we're dealing with mini computers. So whatever that, that space is and you're being decentralized, all you have to do is put in a, a simple unmanaged switch, hook up your, your receiver to that switch itself, and it will actually manage the licenses and you can plug in anything that will actually be able to share on that network itself. So being able to um, share a gigabit LAN is not a problem with our product because of that DHCP server built into it. Long distances, our product can go um, from miles, like I said, uh, being able to run through fiber, uh, run through copper, whatever it is, uh, it's a simple process of just putting managed switches on each end. Um, so being able to have a system that's centralized within a house, but also getting that entire system um, available in a garage, a pool house, 
a guest house, whatever it is, um, across campuses, um, you'd have that ability with our product. We also do have two, USB 2.0 over IP, um, putting a computer system onto, us, onto your system so Mac computers aren't any kind of problems whatsoever. Um, touch tones, keypads, whatever it is, you have the ability to use our product because of that USB. So it's an active USB 2.0 uh, that's on our products themselves. Um, we don't use that at all for firmwares or updates because since our products actually have IP addresses, you, you don't have to use that USB 2.0 for that. It's actually used for you to do USB over IP. On-screen display is pretty simple. Um, nothing special. You just uh, text overlay on the screen. So uh, gives your end user to put any kind of promotions that they might have on, in a commercial environment uh, or even in your residential environment. Um, mom to kids, hey, time to do homework, um, time for bed, whatever message that you're wanting to put on that screen, you're able to do that. And we have three different ways that you can actually do control systems over our, or controlling of your system throughout just that power. So you do have full CEC uh, over IP, so it's two-way CEC. Um, you, do, you are given some simple CEC commands right through, so you're very simple of uh, turn on, turn off, uh, also volume on, volume off, but we do give you access if you do know the CEC commands for each one of your manufacturers or a specific manufacturer. Um, and I think there's a couple websites out there, if not for the, from the manufacturer's websites, that give those CEC commands. We do give you access to put in those CEC commands into each one of the devices that allow you to have full CEC over your system. And these are the, just the simple commands that actually come built into the boxes themselves. We do have also RS-232, so um, pretty much pretty popular, right, over IP. So you do have that, that ability on each one of the devices that you're going to find in our 3G as well as our 2G line. Um, so you're going to have that input on each one of the uh, transmitters as well as the receivers. You are going to have IR over IP. So this kind of came down a little bit later down the line when it deals with our flux capacitor, which we call it. Uh, so roughly about 2016 in January um, is when we came out with this product. It's an IR dongle, uh, which you could have on either end of either your transmitter receiver that gives you full capable control of your system via IR. So this gives us, this talks about really um, showing you being able to intermingle, mix and match all resolutions, all kinds of sources within your system itself from um, your 1080 to your 4K on sources as well as um, displays themselves. Um, so from HDR to non-HDR, um, UHD, we're able to do that and it's all managed by our system. So talk specifically about our, our product line, um, which allows you to do this 4K. So our transmitters themselves. With our evolution of our product, uh, we have a number of line when it deals with our second generation product um, that allowed you to do uh, a couple different things from simple video distribution um, to having your multiple line ins and lines outs, um, whatever it is that you wanted to do around audio as well as distribution, um, you saw different models within that 2G line itself. What you see with our 3G is pretty much everything that we've learned from our 2G, we put it in through our 3G. Um, comes from our 3G AVP. So you do have your analog inputs on the transmitter. Um, you do have stereos out on your transmitter as well as receivers. Um, it's all PoE as well as your ability to do any kind of power if you do need that power without doing the PoE. Um, as you can see on the bottom there, there is the USB 2.0 connection, RS-232. So everything that we've learned when it deals with inputs and outputs as well as feature lines is what you're going to see in our 3G. So that one that I showed you just now, which is the 3G AVP, um, we do have a three input version of that. So every one of your inputs and outputs when it deals with video as well as audio is going to be found on this three input rack mount 
which can live centralized for your system next to your um, network uh, switcher itself. Um, just makes it a lot easier, um, form factors a lot better, as well as aesthetically pleasing when it's living in the rack. Um, but like I said, uh, everything that deals with your inputs and outputs on audio as well as video, you're going to be able to do that right here with the uh, three-in-one rack, rack mount input. This came a little bit later when it deals with our 3G, so being able to distribute it, um, Dolby Atmos and a lot of your um, 7.1 Dolby. Um, the chipset's going to be a lot different, so we did have to come out with a different unit itself that allows you to do either um, any one of those formats. A uh, majority of projects that we see are being done with, uh, with our 3G or 4K line is going to be done with the 3G AVP or even the rack mount, but you are going to have those situations that you do have to or you are going to distribute. Um, Dolby Atmos for your theater rooms or anything like that. So we do give you access to that, and that's called our 3G Hi-Fi. So this past CEDIA from, and I'm sorry if you see me going back and forth on the slides themselves. So obviously, like I said, we've learned from our inputs and outputs from our previous generations, being able to give you a full lineup of everything that you can do within our products themselves. Um, we just released and announced this past CEDIA uh, our newest line within that 3G lineup. Um, so this is to allow you to do simple video distribution in the 4K line. Um, form factor is a lot smaller, so you're looking at a, a receiver or even a transmitter that's going to be a lot smaller than, and I'm going to go back really quick, to our 3G AVP as well as our 3G Hi-Fi. Smaller form factor but you're still going to have every one of the key features that we talked about or I mentioned before. Being able to distribute 4K, being able to mix and match each one of those components uh, when it deals with sources as well as resolution within your system itself without any kind of issues. The only thing that you're going to really lose out when it deals with this, um, we call it the 3G PoE, is you're not going to have the full inputs and outputs of audio. So you're not going to have the mic line in. You're not going to have the line in as you see in our 3G AVP. You're also going to lose out on the USB 2.0 as well as some of the CPC commands. But you're going to still be able to distribute it um, 4K throughout your entire system without kind of any kind of issues. And the best part about having this part of your system is that it mix and matches with everything that's 3G. So depending on what your source is, what you're trying to do within your system itself, this 3G PoE can live in the system with the 3G AVP, the Hi-Fi, or even the rack mount. It all depends on what your actual source is that you have on the other end and what you want to do. Um, you still will have the capability of RS-232, so you will have full control of the units themselves. But it allows us and it allows you to get 4K distribution um, at a 35% lower cost than you're going to find with our 3G AVP or even our 3G Hi-Fi. Something else that we just released or announced in, uh, in Cedia as well as Infocom was our wall plate. So our wall, this particular one is a two gang. It's PoE. Um, you're able to do VGA with audio and HDMI. Um, the switching is done with a physical button over IP command. So um, I know it might be hard to see, but you're able to actually switch to say that you're either going to be using HDMI over IP or even VGA over IP. So you're given those two options when it deals with that. Um, initially, this is going to come in either black or white, or you can have different Lutron available colors. That takes a little bit longer for the order because it's customized, but you do have that option in different colors for this product also. So in the line of the wall plate, we also announced the four gang um, wall plate, which is also PoE powered. It's going to be your VGA with audio as well as VGA over IP. Um, you do have your audio ins, your audio outs, full control with RS-232. Um, the same way when it deals with the coloring, the, the black and the white is going to be your standard, but we're able to order any of the other colors that you'd want also. 
talking about receivers, so we made it really simple when it deals with the receivers. So before we announce our newest uh, addition to the 3G, we had one receiver, um, which is our 3G ADP 518. Um, that allows you for that USB 2.0, depending on your system like I talked about, uh, but you also have your stereo outs as well as full control of RS-232. Um, goes to every one of your displays. So if you do, if you are extracting audio on your display side, um, if you're extracting USB 2.0 on your display side, that's where this receiver would come into play. But like I said, we have the 3G PoE, so a 35% price difference that you're looking at right now with this 3G PoE, which if you don't need any of those inputs and outputs when it deals with your display side. You're able to use this guy. Um, the model number is the 508 uh, PoE. Uh, being able to get your full distribution of 4K, seeing it on the display side is not an issue whatsoever. Um, like I said, RS-232 capable as well as null modem adapters on the bottom side. So you still have your full distribution of 4K at a lower price cost. Some of the accessories with our product line itself. So um, we do have a, the, like I talked about the IR emitter, so the flux capacitor IR dongle, which you see on the top end. But we also have our Razor rack mount, which allows you to actually put any one of your transmitters or receivers if you're going um, centralized, um, the one input units. So you're talking about 13 across when it deals with being able to put those units in um, it's about three units high. Um, it's a really simple way of keeping your rack looking neat and clean. Um, and our smaller form factor um, PoE devices that we just announced that are shipping now also fit in this rack mount adapter too. Something that's been in the books that um, coming soon, I'm hoping at the end of this calendar year, but I think um, more reasonably would be the beginning of the next calendar year is our 3G Tyler. So what this Tyler will allow you to do is to display four uh, inputs, so four sources onto a single screen. So in the line of um, projectors, um, being able to have that giant screen and almost having a, a video wall within a wall itself, you're able to do with this 3G Tyler. Each one of our 3G Tylers actually have four, four receivers built in. Um, and what it does is it takes any one of those four receivers, any one of your four sources that you have in your system that you can actually distribute um, without your, within your entire system. So um, this Tyler is not fixated on one display itself. It can be on your 22 inch uh, display to your 60 inch uh, LED, whatever it is that you're wanting to have this Tyler go to, it will live in your system like its own source and those sources can actually be transmitted throughout and change intermittently uh, within any time that you want. So you will have full access to every one of your sources. It is limited to, if we're talking about just this Tyler, it is limited to four sources. However, when it deals with the Tyler, you can actually add as many Tylers within your system. So from going to that full four, add in another Tyler, which allows you to have an additional three on down. It becomes unlimited on how many Tylers you can have. Just an example of a Tyler being used in the uh, commercial environment in a bar. Like I said, you can tile as many tiles as you want. All you're doing is just adding another Tyler on top of another Tyler, and it just keeps on going. And to talk a little bit about our, our warranty, so we do have a three-year warranty when it deals with every one of our products. Um, any kind of issues that you have at all, um, you're going to call our support team in Florida. And so any, if anything is found to be um, wrong with any one of your product itself, we will UPS label inbox uh, a new unit to whatever location that you're wanting to get to. Um, so drop ship there with a prepaid UPS label in the box so you can send the non-functioning unit back to Florida. Uh, no questions asked whatsoever. Um, like I said, just calling our support team, going through the proper channels and making sure that um, everything is uh, working or not working the way that it's supposed to, and that's done immediately. And just the evolution of our product, the software that we use itself to um, distribute the 4K, um, 
we're also able to just add features via software into every one of our boxes themselves. So this list has grown over the years from the video wall, image push, pull, and pop, um, or even image rotation. It's all done by software. And anytime that we do have any kind of software enhancements or any kind of firmware updates, all located on our website, support.justadpower.com. And you're able to just easily either uh, put in that firmware via IP into each one of your devices, or even do it through a configuration software that I'll show you coming up. Just an example of some of the places that we are. So you'll see, especially talking commercially, um, just the uh, versatility of the products going into from car dealerships to the MGM brand book, um, knowing that you need a product that's going to be very reliable, especially living in that environment. You have millions of dollars that's being exchanged every second um, and having products that are going to be living and breathing and always functional. Um, but uh, like I said, commercial, obviously it works in there, but residential and it just gives you the flexibility with our product, being able to use it in these environments that you see commercially as well as residential. So I'll talk now about the network and software overview. So we talked about that we do things over, uh, the way that we do our system, the way that we manage our network is, uh, during, is through VLANs. Um, so when we talk about VLANs, everyone gets, or a majority of your people um, kind of cringe up um, just because of uh, the certification usually used with VLANs. A lot of people don't understand VLANs. Do I have to be certified to do this? What do I have to do? I have to hire a programmer to be able to configure a switch or do anything like that. And what we're saying is that you don't have to be. Um, because what we do is we're going to give you a software, a piece of software that's all located on our website. And really it becomes a piece of software that's going to be, um, that will configure your entire system. I think anyone in this environment can use our software without any kind of problems because it's easily used. What you see here is an example of how we see um, other companies when it deals with um, HDMI over IP or any company in general versus how we manage traffic. So how VLANs actually work for us. What we do with VLANs is that every one of your sources, which would be our transmitters, we're gonna put them on VLAN. And that allows for our receivers to see any one of those VLANs at any time that you allow your system to do so. Um, obviously managed by a network um, and specifically one of the switches themselves, as well as being in control with whatever control system that you're wanting to do. And I'll touch upon that briefly, but when he deals with the control systems, we're not trying to reinvent the wheel. You're going to have drivers that are going to be able to support with your major uh, control systems that are out there, um, all located on our website, free of charge. You're not being charged anything extra. All you have to do is just download it. So like I said, Every one of your sources will live in a VLAN, um, allows us to do a, a number of things. So being able to do our instant switching, being able to manage your network, being able to have this video distribution network um, segregated for your, from your end users uh, network. That way it's not bogging down their network like you would see in your traditional um, video traffic with your other companies we're able to actually take that traffic and actually segregate it with our VLANs um, that allows it to do the instant switching, but at the same time, live off of that customer's network so it's not bogging down their own traffic that they might have running in the background. So the switches, a um, couple different switches or two manufacturers that we recommend when it deals with the switches. Um, the two manufacturers that we have drivers that are gonna allow you to use our configuration software as well as configure your, your system to the VLANs, it's gonna be the Cisco brand as well as the Luxel brand. Um, specifically, when it deals with the, the Cisco brand, either the SG300 or your SG500 um, or 500X. Um, you have a number of different models when it deals with the Luxel brand. Um, so I'm showing here the Luxel brand, kind of cool things when it deals with the Luxel brand, especially for the audio video environment all of your ports are going to be on the back of the switches themselves. So really easy to navigate when it deals with installation as well as aesthetically, it just looks good in the rack when your end user isn't seeing all your inputs and outputs hanging out. 
Um, but what you're looking at is the front end of your switch when it deals with the Luxel brand. Here's some uh, switch comparison. Um, living in the world of our 3G, so they are all POE. Um, I think the hardest decision that uh, any dealer integrator is going to have to make really is going to be which is going to be the right switch. Um, so A, making sure that it's either one of those two manufacturers because we have the software that's going to support those two manufacturers, as well as making sure that you have enough POE ports if you're going to use all POE um, when it deals with your system. Um, so picking out the right one, but also thinking, hey, this is how many inputs and outputs I have now with the possibility or capability of having remote support, remote systems, whatever it is, um, being able to be stackable. Those are just some of the hardest decisions I think someone might have, which in your line isn't hard at all. It's probably a second decision that you would, that you would have to make. Um, but this would be it. Um, this just shows, A, if they're stackable as well as the POEs. So when it deals with the switches, we recommend the switch to be a layer three gigabit switch that can handle jumbo frames. Um, every one of our feature sets that you see, if you're wanting to get every one of those feature sets, we recommend these specific um, feature sets within the network switches. Specifically, and it gets back to using VLANs in our configuration software, we have built the software already for these two manufacturers. So the most popular accessories as well as switches that we're seeing um, being used in systems across um, the AMS 4424, so it's a 24-port POE stackable switch, so really allows you to expand either within the system centralized or even decentralized, having remote um, locations or having multiple um, uh, rack systems within your entire matrix is possible with this guy because it's um, obviously stackable. So the software needed. Um, and the hardware that's also going to be needed when it deals with setting up any one of our systems. Um, so you will use a USB to serial adapter, and that's going to be used from your computer to the network switch. Um, you do have a console cable. Um, typically, if you're buying a brand new switch, um, you're, it's going to come with the switch. If you don't have any one of these two hardware pieces, let me know, um, as well as you can just call our support team we will ship one out to you free of charge with no issues whatsoever. The other piece uh, that you would need when it deals with software um, would be a Windows computer. So we recommend using a Windows computer um, just because of the operating system and that's what our software um, is configured to. Pre-install software. So right now, a couple things might change when it deals with to your right of your screen there where it talks about emailing your Mac ID, um, but at this time, um, you will have your JAD configuration software which is on our support website. All you have to do is download that. We are going to have the drivers that you're going to use for your control system. So you see all of those. You will have other options of doing either RS-232 or even IP controlled systems on our website um, or even any kind of media switcher. There are options, different options other than your major control systems. Um, that being said, as well as with your, uh, your control systems, you will have to email your MAC ID to our support team. Or yet that email address is right there. You're just going to send that MAC ID to them, and then they'll give you a license, which is going to release the um, license for your control system. It's free of charge, um, but it's just something that our support team is doing right now. So I'll talk about the configuration. So like I said, you don't have to be a network engineer. You don't have to... Um, be Cisco certified. Configuration really becomes almost like a plug and play. Um, a lot of drop boxes as long as you're able to answer the questions. When it says, hey, how many transmitters as well as how many receivers that I um, have in my system. So with the JAD configuration software, you're just going to download it from our site. And really what you're going to tell it is which one of the switches that we recommend um, that you have in your system um, from any one of the Luxo models as well as the Cisco models. Um, on, this, on the Luxo model itself, it actually gives you, uh, it's already pre-configured with the username and password as admin, um, so that usually just automatically pop, pops up and you're just going to hit next. 
Now, really, you're just going to do the drop-down menus like I was talking about. You're going to tell the system how many transmitters you have. You're going to tell it how many receivers you have. Now, the next line down talks about default transmitter. So this would be if you're doing any kind of updates, maybe the entire system goes down, or um, some of your transmitters and receivers actually go down. It's going to ask you which transmitter within your system do you want it to go to. Um, so you just pick whatever one that you feel would be the right one um, to be the default transmitter. Um, if your system goes down for whatever reason whatsoever, it will default to that transmitter until you get your system back up and going. This specifically is looking at a Luxel um, switch. And once you've inputted all those down with transmitters and receivers, as well as given the switch IP address, it's actually going to tell you where you're going to put each one of your transmitters and each one of your receivers. Um, color co coordinated. Um, when you get the Luxel brand, you're going to see that it goes from, um, from left to right up and down, um, I'm sorry, yeah, up and down. So one, two, three, four, um, in that pattern. Um, pretty simple and just being able to making sure that you're putting in your right receivers in the right spot, as well as you're not mixing and matching your, uh, your transmitters. Um, it will notice if you do put a transmitter uh, on the receiver port or vice versa. So software is smart enough to let you know that you have the wrong device switched into the wrong ports. This is just an example of your Cisco. Um, still, overall, it's the same process. However, Cisco does everything left to right. Um, so your one, two, three, your ports themselves are all next to each other. So just um, visually, it just looks a little bit different when you're setting up a, list, a Cisco switch. Just to give a little bit more example of your Cisco switches. Um, or just doing your configuration itself. Next sc screen here um, would be after some of the configuration is done, let you know um, which devices you actually have in your ports. Uh, you are going to be given an IP address. Like I said, uh, each one of the devices are pretty much mini computers, so an IP address that's going to allow you to actually log into each one of those addresses when it deals with either putting in those JPEG logos, um, being able to add firmware, being able to access the software that allows you for a video wall mode is all done through these IP addresses, if that's the way that you'd want to do it, um, as well as if you want to put a universal or default logo within your system. Um, it does give you that option of putting it there so you don't have to go individually into each one of your units. After this screen itself, you're going to hit next. A couple things to pay attention to is to make sure that you're with the latest firmware. Um, so whatever the latest firmware is, it's going to automatically update each one of your devices to that latest firmware. If for some reason whatsoever that you've noticed that, hey, originally I have 10 receivers and it's only showing me five receivers, uh, sometimes a simple hit of the rescan will allow that allow you to just um, it will allow the software to rescan your system to make sure that everything's okay. Um, I was just reconfiguring a system just recently. I had a couple of transmitters that weren't coming through. Just turned out that the cat cable was wrong, or it was a bad cat cable. So all I had to do was just replace the cat cable and did a rescan, and it was able to pick up each one of those transmitters. Next thing is just really watching your system go. So this would be um, it just configuring, like I said, each one of those transmitters being put into its own VLAN. So roughly when it deals with the setup time, um, what we found is that your, um, your Luxel switches um, are roughly about 30 seconds um, per device. So depending on how big your system, that's what you're going to see with the entire system setup. Um, when it deals with your Cisco, you're looking about roughly about a minute. Um, so you do see some speed differences between the two manufacturers themselves. But like I said, both of them work perfectly fine. Um, you're just going to really sit back and wait for your, your system to configure. Your next screen here is actually your last screen. So a couple things to keep in mind. 
Um, so you are given the opportunity to export this information into an index file. That way you have that information stored safely. Um, it's going to give you your, your network IP. It's also going to give you your default gateway. Um, but also it's going to give you information that you're going to need because there is an extra step because you are going to have to create um, a static IP, um, which is easily done, and I'll show you in the next slide. Um, but once you've done all this and you've collected the information that you need, you're just going to hit finish. You're going to copy that static IP, and you're going to go in to your, and specifically I'm showing just the Luxel right here, you're just going to go into your router and you're just going to create, create a static route into the router itself. You're just going to add that static route into your router. And once that's done, your system's complete. Um, it's really that simple when it deals with setting up any one of our systems themselves. Um, anyone can do it, especially someone that's in this field. Um, we're not trying to make anything difficult. We're trying to make it as simple as um, possible when it deals with um, whatever if it is commercial as well as the residential environment to give you all the capabilities that you need um, without having to go and hire someone else to be able to configure a system for you. Um, like I said, each one of our drivers are located on our website, so we do have the major um, control systems available on our website. Um, so you will have to download two simple kind of drivers, so your switching driver as well as your endpoint driver, all located on the website. Other drivers that we also have, so we launch Avant, on controls, URC, um, leads me a little bit to if you're wanting to use any one of our product, almost like a, a little demo gear just to test it out. We'd love for you to let us know by just emailing me or emailing the team itself, and we can send you out a two-by-two -two system. It's going to be two transmitters, two receivers with a network switch already configured for you. Um, and what we do is just give you a simple control system, which is just on controls, and it's an iPad app. You just download it. Once it's synced, you're able to see all the feature sets that I talked about previously, as well as being able to switch. Um, but then at the same time, we give you the option of whatever system or control system that you actually use, that you can download the drivers and you can use that control system on our demo gear. That way you can actually get almost like a real world field of switching components and everything like that. And I didn't take that slide out, but that's it. Um, overall, and I wanted to uh, really have this geared a little bit to our 3G, um, 4K distribution, um, specifically our 3G PoE, which is shipping now, um, both our 707s and our 508 PoEs. Um, so we, like I've said, we've really evolved over the years. We've been doing this for over seven years. Um, we've figured out how to do it, when to do it, and what's the best way to do it. Um, not only with our 3G line of the 3G AVP and the Hi-Fi, but then at the same time at a more cost-effective measure um, with our 3G PoE that still allows you with all our feature sets through software as well as video distribution um, and having a great system. That's all I have. Great. Thanks, Al. I appreciate it. Um, so we'll... Uh... Uh, stay on the line here, and if there's any questions, please uh, feel free. Uh, if you were uh, uh, late getting on, we will have the session is recorded, so it'll be posted up to our YouTube channel, and uh, as all of them are uh, every week. So uh, we'll hang out here. If you guys have any questions, uh, feel free to unmute yourself or just type it into the chat window, and I'll be uh, happy to read them out for you. And we'll. Uh, uh, but thanks for joining us.